So I think uh, he is not can, here yet. Okay, so can uh, who will start start the recording then? Uh, could you please call him, Dr. Sharka? Yes, the rise. Okay, okay. Please. And please do let me know when you start the uh, recording because I would like to have the th all of his, you know, important things recorded. Uh, we have Hafiza, Nida, and Najla. Dr. Najla have joined us. That's great. How are you doing, Dr. Najla? Uh, hello, I am fine. It's a pleasure to see you again. Same here, same here. You're coming every time and we're delighted. And uh, as maybe everybody knows or not knows that Dr. Najla is from Saudi Arabia. And Hafiza Nida, you're, uh, I think, participating for the very first time. So welcome to you as well. So are you, an, uh, are you a student of MPhil at the PhD. University of Agriculture, yeah. Faisalabad? I am. No, madam, I am the student of PhD. PhD student. Of PhD and at the University yes, of Agriculture, Faisalabad? Yes, yes. And your Ji. PhD yeah. is in statistics and what area is it exactly? Actually, uh, uh, I am climate variability, my focus. All right, research. all right, great, that's great. So Dr. Sharka uh, and- uh, Dr. Salia, Dr. Salia, yes. it's, it's now going on. Recording is going all on. All right, all right, all right, okay. We'll start, it doesn't matter, we'll start in a formal manner. Now? Ma'am, can you give me the permission of recording? Uh, we are recording this. Uh, you don't have to record it separately. Every participant will be getting the recording very soon after the uh, workshop. Okay. All right? So yes. don't worry about that. Okay, okay thank you very much. Uh, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the PiStar online training workshop on Tidyverse Model R, or your modeler, as you want to pronounce it. Uh, but uh, this is uh, the most, uh, I mean, for us, it is very, uh, we are very happy that it is the fifth workshop in this, in this series. And the resource persons are myself and Dr. Sharka Hashmi, who is assistant professor at Lahore College for Women University, Lahore, and also Ms. Lekha Mishkur, who is lecturer at Minhaj University. However, due to some unavoidable reasons, Ms. Zulekha is not here at this point in time. And so myself and Dr. Sharka will be presenting the uh, workshop. Uh, the focal person, of course, is Dr. Sayed Basim Abbas. And the rapporteur is Ms. Kamal Aslam, who has been my, one of my most excellent students at Kinead College for Women, Lahore, and has completed her MPhil in statistics. Dr. Vaseem Abbas, of course, is Assistant Director at the Bureau of Statistics, Punjab. Uh, okay, now the participants from Pakistan that we have in our list today, uh, these names are right here in front of you. You can read them. And we are delighted to have all of you. And the international participants, Dr. Vakas Sami, who's basically from Pakistan, but, but because he's been in Saudi Arabia for quite a long time. So now we regard him as an international participant. Dr. Najla, uh, Mr. Thomas, Dr. Raza from Iran, and Ms. Minu from Iran. Um, okay, the plan of the workshop, uh, I won't read the whole thing, but very quickly, uh, after these words of welcome, the rapid chair, Ms. Kamal Aslam, will present a workshop summary report of the four workshops that have already occurred. And after that, I will be introducing Dr. David Stern, Briefly, uh, subsequent to which he will present the keynote address on the place of statistics in the age of data science. Excuse me. After that, uh, we'll start talking about Tidyverse and after a brief introduction of what Tidyverse is about and what is meant by tidy data, uh, we will proceed to uh, this today's topic. We will first talk about simple linear regression and after that, uh, we will have uh, multivariate regression. Actually, Garrett Groleman, the gentleman who taught me in Vancouver, in his slides, it says multivariate regression. However, 
me and Dr. Sharka think that we should call it multiple regression. Uh, so we can sort that out later. Um, after that, we have the presentation by Dr. Raza. If you look on the right top right side of this uh, box, so you can see that it is his presentation and it is a, a presentation made with a lot of effort and I'm sure that it will be insightful and uh, horizon widening for us. After that, I would like to discuss with you all uh, regarding the future activities of PyStar. And the first event that I want to talk about is the World Statistics Day that is coming up on the 20th of October. Uh, I know it is the 3rd of October and there are only 17 days left, but I am optimistic that with uh, you know the ISOS uh, people and particularly my PyStar team, even in 17 days or 10 days, we can um, uh, organize something and uh, I would like to have your input, my dear colleagues, in this. Uh, then I would like to talk about training workshops on machine learning, because you will recall some of you that in the ISOS and PyStar WhatsApp group, I put this query and there were a number of people who said that we want to learn machine learning. Uh, so because you see in Pakistan also, I think it is quite the same in some other countries too that the computer science people know what is machine learning, but the statistics people don't. Um, so after that, we can talk about statistical consultancy sessions that PyStar can undertake. And I have a good news for you in this regard. Uh, and after that, I can talk, we can, we together can talk about uh, what kind of funded research projects or non-funded research projects uh, PyStar could uh, uh, initiate and people could take part in leading to something that is useful for the community or some valuable addition to the scientific literature. And also then it would help in your own enhancement of at least the enhancement of your CV, if not anything else, but actually much more importantly, much more importantly, your own internal growth and intellectual enhancement. Otherwise, you know, I meant that, you know, if it, you get general publications that enhances your CV as well. Uh, after that, I will be uh, requesting Dr. Mohammed Hanif Mia, the president of ISOS, to say, uh, to address the participant for a few minutes and to uh, express his feelings. And after that, I will be telling you about the recordings, uh, you know, the announcement uh, that the recordings of these workshops are going to be available to people who were not able to attend according to a certain methodology. After that, we have the vote of thanks. So first and foremost, without further ado, I will be uh, requesting my dear student, Kawal Aslam, the rapid chair, to present the workshop summary report. So I'm going to escape and I'm going to stop sharing. And I'm going to request Kamal to share her screen. And I hope, uh, Dr. Vaseem, uh, that all of us are now able to share. So, Kamal, if you could do that now, how to get you to do that? Have I been able to stop this sharing or not? Is it still being shared? Okay, now I'm stopping. All right. Kamal, would you like to uh, open your camera for a minute so that uh, people can see you? Uh, no, ma'am. I can't open my camera. Okay. Technical problem. All right. <laughs> so let's have the presentation. Okay, ma'am. Can you see my screen? Yes. Uh, you cannot make it bigger. Uh, okay. That's better. Yes. Thank you so much, Dr. Saleha. Assalamu alaikum, dear all. It's my pleasure to be a rapture of this online Tidyverse workshop. And today I'm presenting workshop summary report regarding visualization, transformation, efficient data tidiness, data types using Tidyverse packages. These workshops were held in last four months. This is a brief background of Master the Tidyverse, various continuing 
education courses were conducted at JSM 2018, one of which was a two-day course entitled Master the Tidyverse by Garrett Crawleyman. Dr. Saliha attended this course in her capacity as the ASA Educational Ambassador for Pakistan. Tidyverse is a collection of art packages that have a common underlying design, philosophy, grammar, and data structures that work synchronously with each other. These are the central packages in Tidyverse, which provide functionality to visualize, transform, and model the data. Online workshops. Four online workshops have been conducted on 27th of June on Tide, uh, on data visualization, 18th July on data transformation, 15th August on efficient data tidiness, and 12th September on data types through Zoom. Timings of workshops was uh, 2 to 5 p.m. National and international participants have attended these workshops. Purpose of online workshop. The main purpose of this workshop was to utilize the time in learning and enhancing the technical skills of the participants. Uh, workshops were conducted online due to the pandemic condition, but it gave the chance to interact with global participants too. These are the names of instructor, focal person, and reputation of the Tidyverse team. Content of the four workshops. The instructor presented the following content. Ggplot2 for data visualization. Various graphs were constructed such as scatterplot, dot plot, box plot, bar graph, and histogram using R codes. For different categories of data, various shapes, sizes, and colors were used for clarification and easy interpretation for the graphs. Deployer for data transformation. Various ways to isolate, isolate the data were explained. Select command for extracting the variables. Filter command to extract the cases. Arrange command to reorder the cases. Summarize command to find the sum of the values of the variable mean of the variable, maximum or minimum value in any variable, mutate command to create a new column, and grouping cases using group by, ungroup, and triple command. Tidy R for efficient data tidiness. Definition of, definition of tidy and non-tidy data using five different formats. Reshape the non-tidy data using gather and spread commands. Tackle the missing values using this command, drop, arrows and uh, drop rows and uh, that contain NS in specified column using drop NA command. There are four types of uh, data types, logicals, string R's, factors, dates, and times. Address delivered in four workshops. In workshop one, Dr. Maimon and Professor Dr. Hanif Mia and uh, in workshop two, Dr. Ali Ahmed and Mr. Iftakhar. In workshop three, Mr. Iftakhar. And in uh, workshop four, Dr. Ali Ahmed appreciated the tidy words and I saw team, especially the great efforts of Dr. Saliha done for the five star. Projects presented in online workshops. In workshop one, Dr. Vaseem Abbas presented his project regarding sustainable development goal for no, uh, for no poverty. In workshop two, Dr. Mr. Fayaz Ahmed presented his, work, uh, his uh, project regarding sustainable development goals for quality education. In workshop three, Mr. Thomas presented his paper based on historical data of Kenya. In workshop four, Dr. Nazla presented her work pertaining to one particular data set. R's grammar, the tidy words. Introduction of tidy words and tidy data were explained by the Dr. David Stun. Import data in R Studio using Read R, Read Excel, Heaven, HTTR, R West, XML2. Transform the tidy data using Dplyr for, ca for cats. HMS, loop the date, and string R packages. For the visualization of data, use ggplot2 to model the data. For prediction purpose, use broom and model R packages. Data revolu revolution and statistics. Reshaping society and science by Professor Shah Jahan Khan. Dr. Shah Jahan had discussed the following points in his presentation, diplomatic statistics, big data, and who owns it. Statistics versus data science, data mining, artificial intelligence, data reshaping society and science, Bureau of Labor Stats on fire, a false blame on statistics. Feedback. 
positive remarks came out when feedbacks were taken from national and international participants in covid-19 pandemic condition each one of them wanted to utilize their time in learning and they were looking forward for this workshops that were organized by isos for enhancing their skills for data analysis using advanced techniques through new, new software and languages and isos will continue to organize these workshops in future for this particular purpose discussion regarding future activities of pi star isos can be used as platform for consultation isos can conduct consultancy training workshops over there future training workshops should based on machine learning and artificial intelligence because because it is a need of the day thank you <clears throat> okay thank you very much thank you very much for that uh it was very well presented uh, kaval but the only thing is that maybe some people are getting a bit confused because when you what um, you were talking about pi star and isos but for the people i want to tell them that pi star is very much intimately linked with isos so even if she says isos it is all right uh in the meantime we have with us a number of people who were not here before i can see professor dr zahur ahmed who is the secretary general of the isos and among the participants uh but that i did not see earlier we have aksa abed we have dr mr hasibulla and we have dr razia noreen so i welcome to everybody uh, thank you very much uh, for being here all right i will now uh, share the uh, the screen again from my side and uh, coming now to a brief introduction of dr david stern so i can try to make it bigger um this is the introduction that i picked up from the internet uh, from the website that he has but uh, actually i was asking david to uh, uh, you know to send to me his detailed cv but uh, he was uh, i think he's shy to do that so then i had to uh, use what i could get so dr david stern uh grew up in niger in francophone west africa and then uh, returned to the uk and germany for his university studies and for 6 years he worked as a lecturer in the school of mathematics statistics and actuarial sciences at maseno university in kenya and he is also coordinator of content development for the new e campus of the university Maseno University is in Western Kenya, where the uh, with the claim to fame that the main campus straddles the equator. Uh, David's PhD was in pure mathematics, but his interests encompass mathematics and statistics, from the very applied to the purely abstract. A large part of the attraction of working in Kenya is the immense variety of challenges that need mathematical or statistical support uh his postgraduate students have worked or are working on problems in climate change road building descriptive statistics and also in mathematics education all these things along with pure mathematics underlying these opportunities is the fact that the current education system is not producing enough people with the skills needed for the country's development uh this is uh, what was being said about uh, i think about uh, the country in, in uh, africa that is kenya and uh, technology is at the heart of kenya's current development as a nation and provides amazing possibilities for educational innovation much of david's work in the past 2 years has been to develop a team to take advantage of these new opportunities both for schools and universities uh david i would like to request you to please um um uh, add to whatever i have uh, presented because there may there are so many other things that uh they need to know about you 
uh, uh, one of the things, of course, is that you are a member of the ISI Task Force on Statistical Capacity Building. ISI, of course, ladies and gentlemen, stands for the International Statistical Institute. So I'm going to uh, hand it over to you now, David. I'm going to stop sharing my screen and over to you. Thank you. Thank you very much. And I will start sharing my screen as well. And uh, I suppose the only things I will add is that uh, since, uh, you know, the, the few extra things that have happened since then is I did return from the university in the UK and I spent a number of years working at Reading University in the UK um, uh, before leaving that more recently to set up a social enterprise. Um, uh, I was also the vice president of the um, International Association of Statistics Education. Um, but I think my role today is to really try to tackle something on this question, which is a, a rather difficult question that, um, that I've been posed to talk about the, uh, the place of statistics in the age of data science. And, and the reason I was very happy to sort of accept this, uh, this wonderful invitation to, to speak to you all about this is because this is a, a subject which I feel passionate about. I think that, um, it's a very difficult topic um, for a number of different reasons, mainly because it's ill-defined. I don't think we can really say, nobody could give you a definitive answer on this because it's a matter of opinion. Um, what does the age of data science really mean? Um, and what is statistics even? You know, um, these, are, these are actually the big questions and how do they relate to one another? Um, I, I think, some of the, the, the big names in the area, Hadley Wickham is one which we will come back to later and which of course if you're working in tidyverse, he's central to your work, he has created the tidyverse. Um, uh, and, but, but he's somebody who really does straddle this sort of word of data science and statistics. And I think it's, uh, it's a really challenging time for statisticians um, but it's also, and I think what I'm hoping to leave people with is the idea that actually this should be a very exciting time for people who have a passion for statistics. This should be statisticians moment. Um, and the question is, can we as statisticians seize this moment? So I guess I should get back to what do we mean by the age of data science? And, and I suppose the, um, the big thing which relates to this comes back to um, the data revolution. Um, this is, was recognized actually seven years ago now, um, is, is when the UN recognized that um, we were entering a really rather different phase. And they, they, this, this term, the data revolution was coined. This sort of in 2015, this really became very important. The term was coined about 2013, um, but, um, in 2015, the report, the word, the word that counts, that counts, was really instrumental in changing people's perceptions about um, the fact that the data revolution isn't just for some, it really is happening across the world. And let's just think for a second, what do we mean by this? And I think this is this is really important because if we are saying we are now in the age of data science, um, then we, we, we've entered the age of data science because there has been a data revolution. And so what is this data revolution? And the definition that they gave in 2015 was that it's an explosion in the volume of data, the speed with which data are produced, the number of producers of data, the dissemination of data, and the range on which there, of things on which there is data coming from new technologies such as mobile phones and the internet of things, and from other set of sources, such as qualitative data, citizen-generated data, and perceptions data. A growing demand for data from all parts of society. This is what they coined as the data revolution back in 2015. And to me, this is still 
the heart of why we have entered into this new era, the era, the era hopefully, of data science. There are a lot of challenges that have come, and we see this more and more as we enter this new era, that there is a lot of data, but that data is currently just a lot of noise. Because actually what's happening more and more is that people are overwhelmed by the data and they cannot turn that data into information. This is what I believe we're seeing happening again and again all over the world, where although the data is now there, it's available, more and more there is confusion and there's sort of a lack of um, understanding which is coming from insights drawn from that data. People are misinterpreting the data, they're misunderstanding it as much as they're drawing important information. The climate change crisis, you know, the data has been there for years showing what is happening across the world and yet um, there have been big lobbying powers pushing against this, pushing small nuggets of data to try and sow confusion. There is good evidence about how these tactics have been used for business interests and others. Um, and how they have been using or misusing data deliberately to create confusion, to create doubt, so that people don't understand. And that is what we're getting. The people are getting overwhelmed by data. They don't know which data is real. They don't know which data is fake. They don't know what data to trust, what data to, to distrust. This, the age of data science has become an age of confusion because we don't yet have the tools to make sense, to interpret, to turn that data into solid, reliable information which is really the role of a statistician, in my mind. And this is really important. In my mind, statistics should not be defined by its methods. It should be defined by turning data into information, by taking the data which is in the world, whatever data it is, whether it's experimental data, whether it's structured data, whether it's quantitative data, whether it's qualitative data, whether it's researcher generated or citizen generated, whether it's actually designed for, or whether it's just collected and it's sort of, you mine it. All of these are data and we should be using data and interpreting data and understanding data, yeah. and turning that data into information because Turning data into information, in my mind, that is the role of a statistician. So, are we really talking statistics here, or are we talking data science? When I say data mining, people think data science. When I look at, when I talk about big data, people think about data science. You know, what are the tools for that? Well, we've heard of machine learning. That is a tool to get a hold of big data and to turn that data into information and hopefully to draw understanding out of that data. Um, is it a tool of data science? Is data science part of statistics? Or is statistics part of data science? For me, these are some of the really important questions. Um, and they're not important because we need to answer them. But they are important if we want a sense of identity, if we want to understand should we as statisticians be learning the tools of the data scientists, machine learning and others? Or should the data scientists be learning about statistics or should both? Is, should there be a distinction or should there not be a distinction? I, I loved, it was a number of years ago um, when Hadley Wicken was posed this question when he was one of the keynote speakers at the uh, World Statistics Congress. He was posed the question, isn't data science simply part of statistics? And he said, his answer is wonderful. His answer is one I really believe in. He said it should have been, but that ship has sailed. It's too late. We it can no longer be part of statistics because the statisticians did not embrace it. They were too stuck on their methods. And that, to me, is really the key. When we look at Hadley Wickham and the work he's done, you've talked of the tidyverse. The tidyverse, I believe, is really important. And 
and central to this, and it's really described in his book, Arthur Data Science. Um, and, you know, the processes are, as he put it, the processes of a good applied statistician. You need to import and to tidy the data so that the data is in a form you can use. You then need to transform it, to visualize it, to model it, and to iterate until you build an understanding. And the key here is modeling is not the end, it is a tool to help you with understanding. And actually, if you go into the details of what Hadley Wickham is saying here, actually, he talks about the fact that models help you, to, uh, help you to scale, but they won't fundamentally surprise you. They'll tell you what you're, whether what you've got enough data, they'll tell you the details. They won't surprise you. Whereas visualizing will surprise you. You can learn things you didn't know you weren't looking for before with a good visualization. And then you might need to use modeling to understand how deep it is to, do, to dig into it. But the tools of modeling and visualizing should go hand in hand. And you'll, of course, need to transform your data to iterate this and predict data. And we must not forget the importance of then communicating those results, passing that information on to others. Because if we just build the information for ourselves and we don't share with others, then we're not actually informing. We're not turning data into information. Because information is fundamentally communicated. It needs to be communicated and communicatable to others not just staying with us as statisticians. So, in the real world, data should determine the appropriate methods. And therefore, it is depending on what data you have and where it comes from that should determine which methods you should use. Or maybe even, um, depending on the data you're going to collect, how you should design the collection how you should prepare for it, and whether that means you're planning to use tools from statistics or data science, whether you're using modeling or machine learning, whether you're visualizing, whether you're using qualitative or quantitative, these things should be coming from the data and the nature of the data you have collected or will collect, and the nature of the data which you are trying to draw information from. It is the data which needs to determine the methods. I gave a talk, uh, oh, so let me just finish with this, because I, I, do, I do think that it's important that, you know, the last talk was about visualization, and at the forefront of visualization was um, Hans Rosling and his amazing work, which used visualizations to tell stories which made people understand how the world had changed and they hadn't noticed, to help people to actually visualize that changing world and to be able to then draw from that so that they could change the way they acted and the things they did. And I, I wanted to draw your attention to this and to the work from Hans Rosman because this was a wonderful instance of where data was positively used. And as somebody who was working in development, I felt the implications of his actions, of his communication, of his visualizations in the way funding was given, in the way people went about their day-to-day -day work for years and years afterwards, because he had communicated information. He had changed the way people saw the world and through communicating what the data was telling him, he had helped people to make better decisions and different decisions which were more related to the world they were working in and not what they had been taught about in textbooks, which was out of date. He had changed the perception using the data. And that's what statisticians should do. And I gave, this, I gave a talk on this around how this should be changing the way we teach at undergraduates and other. And I um, wanted to sort of just bring this up because I do think that there needs to be a huge shift in how we're rethinking the way um, statistics is taught so that it can become more encompassing in this age of data science. And I think George Cobb, um, back in 2015, was really thinking about this very hard from an American perspective, but a lot of his thoughts are very valid. And 
I'm going to really sum that thinking together with a final thought. And this is the thought which came out of that, which I felt was relevant here. That statistical problem solving can be liberated from its mathematical foundation and the programming skills. Um, uh, and that is fundamentally saying that if we think of statistics as being the application of statistics, as in using statistical tools and data science tools to understand data and to draw out information, then we can solve problems using statistical and data science methods. And we can do so without needing the ma same mathematical foundation on which statistics is built. And without needing the deep programming skills for which you, which you need for the machine learning and the data science techniques. I believe that we shouldn't be thinking of these as being sequential. You need to know your maths before you learn how to solve statistics, to analyze data. I believe you shouldn't have to be able to program your own bit of machine learning before you can use data science to interpret data which needs those methods. I believe we should be bringing together and thinking of these three together. Yes, deep mathematical understanding. I was a mathematician. My, I, I did mathematics because of the beauty of it. I have a deep, deep understanding of mathematics and it helps me. I have been a professional programmer. I work with data. Later today, I will be working with somebody who did an experiment. I will be going through and helping them to analyze their data. These things do not need to be built on one another. They can build alongside one another. And they would be much more powerful if we were enabling people to understand, to draw information out of data at the same sort of place as early as they start learning about mathematics and as they start learning about programming. These three are all important. They are wonderful, important skill sets, but they should not be thought of as being sequential. They should be thought of as going hand in hand with one another. And so we should be developing these skills together. We should be analyzing data, as well as learning about mathematics, and as well as building recording skills. So, to come back to this question, the wonderful question I was posed, so what is the place of statistics in the age of data science? I believe it should be central. I believe that statistical problem solving should become one of the core literacies. We should be thinking about literacy as including the statistical literacy. It should be taught from very early on in primary school right the way through. We need to think of statistical thinking as being an integrated part of our society and that we need to be thinking about interpreting, drawing information out of data as being um, part of what we do on a daily basis, whatever subject we're working on. But nobody knows. That is my opinion. The, the reason I believe that the place of statistics in the age of data science is so central is because I have great faith that statistics is more than just its methods. Statistics is about turning data into information. Thank you. Oh, thank you very much, uh, David. That was uh, wonderful. I would like to now uh, request uh, the participants to put forth any questions that they might have. Um, Dr. Zaid Hussain, I think you were wanting to put some question. And also I would like to request Dr. Zahoor, who uh, you know, has been dealing uh, with, uh, or at least learning big data during his PhD studies abroad, uh, to put some pertinent question to Dr. David Stern. Uh, uh, David, would you want to continue to share your screen? Uh, or has it? Stop. Uh, you are not sharing it. You are sharing it again. Okay. Yes, uh, Dr. Zahur, would you like to put forth any question? Uh, well, thank you very much, uh, uh, Dr. David Stern, giving us a very good uh, presentation. But unfortunately, 
I could not attend the whole. I was traveling, and during that, my <laughs> mobile battery was dead. So I oh, uh, just I connected a few minutes before. Mm -hmm. I see. Uh, okay, it doesn't matter. Dr. Uh, Stern, I would like to ask you, this diagram that you made, if you could put that again, where you, you, you said that uh, this uh, statistics could be independent of um, this one. Yes, this one, this one. So now what does it mean? Statistical problem solving. This is what this, we statisticians are supposed to do, right? And you are saying that this can be liberated from both its mathematical foundation and its programming skills. Now, for example, in Pakistan, we are very much, very much into first teaching the mathematical foundations. For example, at Kinead College, my institution, uh, the students who are majoring in statistics, they have to learn calculus one, calculus two, uh, linear algebra, differential equations, and uh, numerical analysis, along with the, in their earlier semesters, along with statistical methods one, methods two, probability distributions one, probability distributions two, and sampling one, sampling two, et cetera, et cetera. And, uh, you know, uh, the applied courses or maybe some of the optional courses, they would come later. So uh, this is one thing that we are heavily into, you know, trying to have, have, have our students have a solid mathematical foundation before they do the statistical problem solving. And the other one you say is the programming skills. As I mentioned, uh, we statistics people here in Pakistan, many of us feel that in this big data world that is now there, uh, we don't know enough compute, we don't have enough computing skills, and therefore the computer science community is uh, kind of like they have hijacked uh, this uh, was basically our domain, but we cannot handle those mega computers. So now people are wanting to learn machine learning, the stats people. So, I mean, uh, what you say is obviously a kind of a revolutionary remark, but could you please tell us exactly how this is going to happen in a country like my, mine? Okay. Thank you for the question. And I want to point that it's sort of, this has come from Cobbs in 2015, you know. Um, uh, this is sort of, by and large, I am just reformulating what Cobbs was saying in 2014, 2015. And um, so this is a paper from his, I strongly recommend this. If you would like to read a bit about how to rethink the sort of curriculum you're describing, this is very, very similar to what Cobbs is trying to talk about um, in this paper that he wrote in 2015. And so I think this is a very good paper to refer you to. That he was exactly trying to answer that same question you know, the, where in, in the US they had been saying for quite a long time, we don't want to have to go through and teach these mathematical courses as a foundation before we can teach statistics. And, and Cobb really in 2015 tried to address this and tried to rethink from an undergraduate perspective, how could we do this differently? But let me, but let me just say more concretely what this actually looks like. I am not saying at all that the mathematical foundations nor the programming skills are not important. These are both very, very valuable and important. I mean, I've been a professional programmer. I am a mathematician at heart. That is who I am. Both of those are skills I have inherently. What I am saying is that I don't need those skills to be given a set of data and to start trying to draw information and understanding out of the data. Those skills help me to go beyond. Those skills help me if I'm looking at climate data where extremes are more or less um, common than they might be in other types of data. I then question, well, I re do I really need an L2 norm, which is a sort of least pairs method, or do I need a different norm, which sort of penalizes extremes more, or it penalizes extremes less? Do I need a different mathematical measure when I'm looking at my measure theory 
to be able to understand the probability distributions, to draw out and maybe use different probability distributions. Yes, that depth of mathematics is valuable, it's important, but it's important at the edges of understanding. It's important when I'm in a case where actually the standard methods aren't penalizing extremes enough or they're penalizing extremes too much. That would be an example. To just start looking at trying to understand data, I don't need to be understanding measure theory. Yes, yes measure theory is central to how we analyze data in, in statistics. You know, understanding how to measure distance is, is critical to be able to understand you know, your regression, when you're going to do your modeling later, you'll be using regression models, and your regression models will all depend on the measure you've chosen and how much you're penalizing extremes versus not, in, you know, how much you, things which are extremes are penalized. And that depends on your measure. And so, understanding the mathematics adds value, it adds depth, but it's not needed. It can be got alongside the skill of taking data and analyzing it and learning from it. Um, the same with the machine learning. Actually, to use machine learning now, you don't need to rewrite and do the machine learning from scratch. There's actually tools out there which can help you do this. You can work as part of a team. Um, what's needed more and more is for more and more people who do work in machine learning to be actually working more collaboratively where they're actually um, not just reinventing the wheel but using new methods because the machine learning methods are developing fast but from a mathematical perspective most of them aren't as complex as they first appear what they're finding out are not things which are necessarily deeper and I had a wonderful, there was a wonderful talk about this again at the last World Statistics Congress, where, you know, they explained how um, people using these sort of techniques um, were then getting these sort of things where they just took this huge amount of data and they then pressed the button and they ran the machine learning and they learned something and they'd then go back to the experts and they'd say, look, we found this. And the experts would say, yeah, we already knew that. So, you know, there's actually, there's some wonderful examples of this. My favorite example of where they got it wrong is with Apple and the big hype with which they launched a credit card, only for it to be pulled a few weeks later because it was both sexist and racist, because they hadn't got their machine learning algorithms right. And they just trusted in the computer instead of actually building in the understanding. And this to me, is really the critical component that if you just use the machine learning blindly without your ideas of statistical problem solving, without your foundational understanding on what are you actually looking at, then it's not as powerful. But programming and being able to do the machine learning and to be able to actually work with this mass of data which is coming out from all the things we do on a daily basis, that is a skill which is needed these skills need to work together and we shouldn't be saying you need to be a mathematician you need to be a programmer before you can become a statistician i was a programmer i was a mathematician before i became a statistician but i recognized that i didn't need to be i could have been a statistician first i could have become a statistician before i really understood do you really believe that at the end of all your mathematics courses your undergraduates who are coming out have a deep enough understanding of measure theory to be able to question whether or not the measure they're using in their statistics is going to be the right measure or not. No, this is the problem. The depth you need to get to in the mathematics to ask the right questions is too deep. So what we should be doing is learning that alongside the skills of statistics, being able to analyze data and turn it into information. That's well, the key. So in your then, first year, you have your consultancy course as a first year course, not a fourth year course. That's the implications. You start teaching people how to do things from day one. You can still teach the mathematics, you can still teach the programming, but you should also be teaching them to work with data and to get information out of data from day one.
Oh, thank you very much, David. Thank you so much. This is uh, just wonderful. I wish uh, we could have continued uh, by putting questions to you, but I think now we need to get to the model R or and um, or modeler, however we, is the right pronunciation. But uh, David, this is not the end of it. <laughs> I think we'll just keep on bothering you uh, from time to time so that we can get more insight and uh, benefit from your expertise and insight. I'm uh, on behalf of uh, PyStar, my team, ISOS, I'm wanting to express my deep gratitude to you for sparing time for, for us, because I do know that you're very, very busy, and uh, it's really, uh, I appreciate it very much indeed. Thank you, David. I know, thank you. It's been a real honor, as always, to interact with you and to see the wonderful work you are doing with PyStar and ISOS. So I would like to really offer you my congratulations and encouragement to keep going with the wonderful efforts you are making. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, David. Thank you very much. All right, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I will now share the screen. And uh, this is the talk that we were, uh, that was given by Dr. David Stern. Oops, sorry. Uh, the place of statistics in the age of data science. Uh, this uh, topic came into my mind the other day because as you know, the ones who have been attending earlier workshops that in the third workshop also we invited Dr. Stern to uh, to talk to us and during that uh, talk uh, in the question answer time, this question came into my mind then and then this is exactly the question that I put to him and asked him to uh, do it for us as a keynote speaker. Uh, so what's next? Ladies and gentlemen, now it is time to start the uh, proceedings of today's workshop. So prior to talking about Model R, uh, in recognition of the fact that there are a number of people who are uh, joining for the first time, uh, I would like to introduce Tidyverse. We do this every time for the sake of the people who are joining for the first time. So ladies and gentlemen, you've just now heard an excellent talk. Data science is a buzzword today. And how, what is the cycle of data science? You would form some hypothesis, you would design ex an experiment, uh, and then you would collect the data, and then you would ex explore or test, uh, do all kinds of analyses on your data, and then you would communicate the results. And by this time, some more hypotheses have arrived in your mind reason in your mind, and then the cycle goes on. Um, Tidyverse is uh, what is Tidyverse? It's a collection of powerful data science tools within R. It enables you to do all these things efficiently and uh, elegantly. So uh, the American Statistical Association uh, gave me the honor of uh, selecting me as the educational ambassador for Pakistan and uh, under that, in 2018, I went to Vancouver and uh, attended this uh, JSM Joint Statistical Meetings, this very, very big conference, and also attended this two-day course entitled Master the Tidyverse, rendered by Garrett Grolemont, who is Principal Data Science Educator at our, at our studio in America. So what is Tidyverse? It's a collection of modern art packages that share common philosophies, embed best practices, and are designed to work together, just as Kamal already has shared with you. Uh, so the packages are not just these that you see here, but there are many others too. And uh, in Kamal's presentation, you saw a diagram where you saw many of them. Now, one of the most important concepts, ladies and gentlemen, is the concept of tidy data. So what is tidy data? A data set is tidy if and only if every variable is in its own column, every case is in its own row, and each value is in its own cell. Although, uh, that is obvious because you know if every 
variable is in its own column and every case, every record is in its own row, then naturally every value will be in its own cell. What is non-tidy data? You know, if you have lists such as these, and in reality, you're wanting to say that in New York City, which is uh, the size of the particle was large, the, this pollution, uh, some kind of pollution, and the amount of that was 23. Whereas in uh, New York City, the second record is that in New York City, for the small size particle, the amount was this much, 14. But you see, it is so difficult to tally this first list with the second list, with the third list, because here we have three in the first row and second uh, also has three, but in the second list, there are four in the first row and two in the second row. And in the third list, all six are in the same row. So it's very untidy, non-tidy data. I, I repeat, tidy data is this one that you see. Uh, okay, now what is next? This was the thing that we repeat every time so that the new participants have some idea. Today's topic, ladies and gentlemen, is modeling with Model R. Model R and also uh, Broom. Uh, I would like to uh, request that uh, the mic would need to be muted. There's some voice noise. And if you could please mute your mic, that would be kind. Uh, I need to say that we are recording this thing and therefore we need all the mics muted other than mine. Uh, that's better. Thank you very much. Please, I'm requesting you that uh, this is required because otherwise in the recording, you know, this would be creating a problem. So if uh, uh, it's muted, then when we will be sharing these recordings with people who did not attend the workshop, uh, it would be easier for them. Thank you very much for that. Uh, now I can get back to hopefully to the slides that I was dealing with. All right, so I was talking about today's topic. Uh, we are, I'm going to discuss two uh, packages, room and model R. So let's uh, start. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to talk about simple linear regression. For all those of you who are, who are statisticians, you know what I'm talking about. And for those who are not, uh, if uh, we have two variables, two quantitative variables, the relationship between them can be linear, meaning that if you take one variable along the x-axis and the other along the y-axis, the values show a straight line pattern. It could be going downward, it could, it could be going upward, et cetera. But then, of course, the relationship could also be nonlinear. It could be like, uh, what can I say, para parabolic or S-shaped or something like that. So, uh, of course, we are desire desirous of creating well-fitting models for such data sets. Uh, this straight line that you see here and this curve that you see here and this curve. So these are what we are aiming at those models that fit the data well and are able to represent those data sets uh, appropriately. So this is the topic then, models. And as I said, I will be beginning with simple linear regression model only. So I'm going to uh, run these slides which, are, which were given to us by Garrett. Uh, just see how it goes. Uh, there's some animation over here. And uh, if I can uh, now run it. So you see, first of all, you had the data and then you uh, apply the algorithm and you get the model function. And what is the model function? Uh, that's the first thing, which function you should be applying. And the second thing is, what is the uncertainty associated with your model? Uh, in other words, uh, you can say, how good is your model? And uh, so uh, these are, you know, the, the confidence interval that you have against every single value. Uh, those are the kinds of things that you discuss when you talk about that. And then as all these statistics people know, residuals are also very, very important. Uh, they play a very important role in modeling. For those who are not statistics people, because there are at least there's one who's not, in this uh, workshop, and I'm grateful to him for being here. 
uh, it is the you know the this the difference between the, the the predicted value the line that you have fitted and the actual data value um, so what are the predictions as i said the values which are on this line that you have fitted uh, those are the predicted values the that's what you that's how it goes and you know this was just one uh, simple example but there can be so many different algorithms to deal with different situations so as you can see here uh, these are some of them lm linear model glm generalized linear models gam i can i don't have to read all of them you can read them here generalized penalized robust then you can also talk about trees you can talk about random forests and you can talk about gradient boosting machines but what i'm going to pick up here is the very first one the simplest one the lm function and this is for the simple linear regression as well as for the multiple linear regression so let us consider a data file ladies and gentlemen it's called wages and what does it contain uh, income predictors extracted from the national longitudinal study in america sponsored by the us bureau of labor statistics so i would like you to have a look at this file uh, it has income height weight age marital status sex or gender education number of years of education and honestly i'm not sure exactly at this point in time what exactly is afqt i did uh, we'll have to look it up and you can google it and you can find it but let us concentrate on income so if i want to uh, make a histogram of income uh, this is it and you know ladies and gentlemen it is uh, sorry it is well known all over the world that income distribution is uh, highly positively skewed so that's how it is but now this workshop is not about ggplot so i'm not going to talk about it we have already done it in much detail in the earlier workshop so whoever did not get to attend those earlier workshops you could now have an opportunity to acquire them through the mechanism that i will be mentioning at the end but this is the histogram of income of this particular data set but when i took log income and then drew the histogram it is it was very interesting to find and we, we did it again and again that it became the positively skewed thing became negatively skewed which uh, is interesting and i will uh, not comment on it right now because uh, i think somebody more expert than me will later be able to tell me why this happened but for all the audience why are we taking log income you see ladies and gentlemen there is a lot of huge variation in the income values so many times this log transformation is applied in such situations so that the values become much much smaller and the scale is then much smaller however i do want to comment here that although garrett has used log income and we are following his slides in this workshop but i think even if we wanted we could do it straight with income itself also now let's uh, start doing something here let's suppose that our goal is to fit a linear model to the data a, a simple linear regression model and suppose that we wish to establish a model that will exhibit the relationship between log income and education remember there was that uh, this uh, column second last column which was telling you how many years of education this person had had so uh, let's now go for this so how do we achieve this by applying this function lm uh, you remember i gave you that list of so many different functions and this was the very first one so that's what we are going to do all right so let's go for it what is the code ladies and gentlemen all i have to do is to write lm and then i have to open the bracket and close the bracket uh in fact i should have kept this black so that um oops sorry well you can make it back later i don't think i have to do it 
So this is the parenthesis with LM. And this last one also is the parenthesis with LM. And uh, now, uh, what is inside? All you have to do this uh, right, ladies and gentlemen, is this. The, what we call in Pakistan generally the dependent variable, and then the tilde sign, and then the independent variable. Or in other words, the predictant and the predictor. Or in other words, the regressant or the regressor. Uh, okay, so all you have to do is to put this tilde sign. And after the comma, you write data equal, and then you write the name of your uh, data set. So as I had already told you, it was called wages. Uh, if you just have a look here again, it is wages and it is XLSX, meaning, what does it mean, Excel? Uh, I think it is some kind of Excel file only. And so this is all you have to do. And after um, I complete my part with only the slides, I will be requesting Dr. Sarkar to open her uh, our studio and tidyverse, and then she will run this for you. When you run this little code, ladies and gentlemen, uh, what will you get? First, let's look at the linear regression equation that we teach in our colleges and universities all the time. Of course, uh, we, this is the equation of a straight line. It is linear regression, so we are talking about a straight line. And this is the regression equation that we, we, we will obtain. Of course, we will obtain the numerical values of A and B. And A and B are, therefore, the estimates of the parameters of the true regression equation, the population regression equation, is the estimate of alpha, uh, estimator of alpha, and B is the estimator of beta. I'm just revising this uh, for the sake of uh, those who are not aware of it. But of course, all the statistics people, they do it all the time. So this is what we are wanting. This little code that I just wrote for you will be giving you the values of A and B. So uh, the simplicity of the code I've already uh, talked about. And uh, now, uh, they are, uh, this is again animated by Garrett. Uh, this is the response variable and the tilde in between and the predictor variable. So now uh, let's do it. Fit the model and then examine the output and what does it look like? It's the same one, nothing new. Oh, sorry. Just see, ladies and gentlemen, it's the same thing. LM and the parenthesis and the parenthesis on the other side. And then log income is my uh, dependent variable or response variable. The tilde, the, this one is the predictor. And then comma, and then data equal to wages. But this whole thing, I've given it uh, this name, mod underscore E, a model in which E standing for education. Education has been taken as the independent or predictor variable. So it's an object uh, in technical terms, this is an object in which I'm going to store uh, the results of this uh, code, application of this code. So let's do it now. So we did that. She will be doing it, my dear colleague, Ms. Dr. Sharka, in a while. And when she does it, and then uh, you enter, uh, you don't get anything, but then you write this MOD underscore E again. And as soon as you type this and uh, run this again or enter, you get all these things. So the coefficients, the first one is the intercept A, and the second one is the, uh, uh, sorry, the regression coefficient B. Uh, so if if I wanted to know what was the class, what was the class of this mod E, I would type this. This is another function, C L A double S, parenthesis open, parenthesis closed. And inside I write the, this object, body, uh, the, the name of this one. And what do I get? It tells me that it is LM, it is a linear model. So let's proceed. Our linear model is uh, this then, right? Because what were the values we got? 8.5577 and 0 0.1418. So this is what we got. Uh, 
that is the output and so this is the end well we should put a hat here and then it is the end of the story hat means that the you know these are it's an estimated uh, regression line uh, an estimate of the true regression line uh, okay now uh, again it's the same animation going on now in a different way of dealing with this whole thing you those of you who have been present in previous workshops you know how fond um, i am of the pipe operator and also my colleagues and hopefully all of you also you know with the pipe operator you do it in a different way uh, the name is the same again the same name has been given uh, i mean this is an easy way of saying it that you give it this name uh, the arrow should be pointing towards this title whatever you want to call it and then uh, you write the name of your data file and then you apply the pipe operator this whole thing is called the pipe operator and then uh, generally we enter and write in the next line but there's no problem writing in it in the same line also what do we write this lm function the new function that we are learning today lm open the parentheses write your dependent variable tilde and your independent variable and comma again data equal everything is the same the only thing is that you put dot now now that you've written wages here then here you will be putting uh, the dot and the wages will be passed to this here so then the code will run it will work and you will get the same output that you got before now the next thing is broom what you did before was with the uh, a model r uh, you would need to install that uh, i don't know why that is missing here but for broom after installing the package tidyverse you would also load the library broom dr sharka will when she does it she will also load uh, the library model r for you i'm sure after which you would be able to do all that which i discussed with you just now for this broom uh, what does broom do for us it turns model output into data frame data frame is one of the good ways of presenting uh, these things so broom will do that for you so you will after installing the package tidyverse you will also load the library broom and once you do that then broom will work for you it actually does three things for you uh it 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 uh, if you write tidy and parentheses it will give you the model coefficients and the statistics if you type glan ce parentheses glance then it will give you the model diagnostics and if you write augment and parentheses then it will give you the predict predicted values the residuals and also other raw values so let's see if i type tidy just see what i am doing so simple previously i had uh, created this object mod underscore e you remember all that lm thing was called this so now i apply the pipe operator with this thing and i just simply write tidy and this uh, parenthesis and i run this command and i get all these things which are down here all these things are uh, at the output it is telling us that it is giving us the intercept and the regression coefficient and uh, the values are exactly those which you saw earlier 8.55 0.14 it also gives you the standard errors of these statistics uh this one i think it is the t t statistic because you know from your theoretical work that for regression you have the t test and then it gives you the p values and both of them are extremely small of course we are most of the time interested in the p value of the regression coefficient not so much in the intercept so it's very very small because you see it is it says e minus 148 and if i am not mistaken it means 8.4 multiplied by 10 raised to minus 148 that is a really 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 small number if i type glance very simple code simplest code that same object that i have earlier created the pipe operator what do i want to do now i want to do this i want to have a glance at the results 
It gives you the model diagnostics, ladies and gentlemen. It tells you R squared, adjusted R squared, sigma statistic, oops, sorry. Uh, they, these are animated, I think. P-value and log likelihood, uh, this uh, criterion, uh, uh, chi key and the other one. So all these things that you might be interested in. And after that, the third one, augment. Augment means, you know, in ordinary English to add things. So this gives you data frame of the model output related to the original data points. You see, you want the predicted values, don't you? If you look at this fourth column, the fitted values, and uh, this here on, in the second column, you can see the log income, your dependent variable, uh, obtained by applying the log transformation to the original income figures. Here you have your uh, predictor variable, education. So after fitting this model, now through this command, A-U-G-M-E-N-T parenthesis, you are able to get the fitted values, the standard errors, the residuals, and uh, now what is this? Uh, sigma Cook's distance, standardized residuals, all those things that you might need. Uh, so this is uh, adds the original wages data set to the output. If you write uh, data equal wages inside, then it also gives you the original data set. Uh, I was already uh, being able to see log income and education, although I had not uh, put uh, data equal wages inside these parentheses. So Dr. Sharka will expand on this later. Um, but, but, the, but the basic thing is so simple that you simply write augment and you get that. Now let's suppose the goal is to use a pipe in order to model log income against height. Now it sounds strange, but <coughs> excuse me, why would income be uh, regressed against height? We are simply following Garrett's slides at this point in time. So just uh, bear with us. So then use broom and dplyr functions to extract the coefficient estimates and their related statistics and also the adjusted r squared and the p value for the overall model so if we want to do this ladies and gentlemen now what is the name that we have given to this object mod underscore h because now the predictor variable is height not the uh, you know the education of the person. So what do I do? I take my data set wages, I apply the pipe operator, I write LM parenthesis. It's the same code, exactly the same, except that instead of height, I write education. And then I don't see anything, but then when I type mod H and underscore H again, and then uh, also then I apply the pipe operator and tidy it, wanting to tidy it up, kind of, if, I want, if you want me to say that, uh, this is what I will get. Uh, this, this is what I get. The intercept, it is telling me uh, the value is 6.98. For the regression coefficient, it is 0 0.05. The p-values, if I write uh, not tidy, but glance, mod h, pipe operator, glance, then I will get so many columns, but then I apply another pipe operator and select only these two columns, which are saying adjusted R square is 0 0.0395779 and p-value is again a very small number. Of course, these values of R square are very, very uh, poor, meaning that it's not a good fit at all because R square is only 0 0.04. 4% of the variation in the uh, dependent variable values is being explained by the independent variable. But you see the point here is not whether it's good or bad. Point here is to uh, share with you the code by which you will be able to apply it to your own data. Uh, after this, uh, I also want to uh, do this filtering. So I only look at those which have P values less than 0.05. I applied a tidy first and then I apply this filter command. But you see both of row, those rows are being shown because both p-values are less than 0 0.05. So uh, 
in the mod E education one also, it, it's the same story. And in the mod H height one also, it's the same story. The P values are very, very small. So that's good, but the R square is not good. Uh, so this is uh, why we did this is for this, because we were wanting to see which one is a, you know, according to P value, which one should be picked up. Um, the next thing is now multivariate regression. Again, I repeat, we think it should be called multiple regression. And I'm now going to uh, stop sharing my screen and over to Dr. Sharka Hashmi. <clears throat> Uh, thank you so much, Dr. Uh, Salia. I am going to share my screen. On the left side, uh, there is a R studio in which uh, four windows are displayed. In the top uh, left window, it's a code window. We will write uh, our commands here. And in the bottom, uh, command, the result of the commands will be displayed. First of all, I will uh, run the command uh, which Dr. Salia has discussed. Then I will go to the multivariate, multiple. Uh, Dr. Sharka, can I interrupt you for a second? I think okay. you may need uh, that red pointer because otherwise uh, it's a bit not clear for those okay. people who are okay, uh, okay. attending for the first time. And the other thing, okay. the, the where you have the PowerPoint, uh, maybe you can make it a bit smaller so that your uh, R studio is bigger. Uh, I'm just uh, discussing the code first. That's why I'm uh, maximize the R studio. In the R studio, you can view the first four lines in which library tidyverse, library model R, and library broom. Uh, in, um, first of all, we uh, load these three um, functions into our RAM. Just uh, click on the run button, which is here. And uh, you can see in the bottom side, there is uh, um, this one is after running the command, you can view that uh, uh, command has been run now. So next is uh, we will see the uh, file by using the command view. V is capital, view, and within parentheses, this is the file name, heights. So I'm going to run this command, just placing our um, cursor here in the line, and then click on the run button. This is our run button so uh, i'm clicking on this button you can view that this uh, uh, top window this is the file excel file having different va variables income height weight age marital status sex education afqt uh, so uh, using this data set we will construct one more data set which is called the wages so come to this uh, file again. First of all, we uh, load these three packages and then view this command. Now I'm going to run the next command, which is wages by placing our cursor in this uh, row, uh, or we can highlight this whole command. Both ways are same. So after highlighting, I'm clicking on the button, run button. So you can view uh, the wages is in the bottom side. Uh, now I'm again right here, wages, view wages. This will give us the uh, Excel file of wages, view wages. and uh, select this command and click on the run button. You can see this is our wages in which income, uh, height, weight, all variables are same, but uh, in the height, 
there may be the possibility that any value in the um, column of income may be zero but in this uh, wages file all uh, incomes are greater than zero we can compare both uh, files wages uh, having all the values greater than zero and uh, uh, height this is height you can observe a single value here which is uh, zero and there are so many more values uh, um, in the same uh, column with the zero so we are excluding this zeros and uh, storing this data into the wages file now considering this file for the whole of our uh, data uh, for the whole of our um, codes now come to the file again now i'm going to run the simple linear regression which dr salia has discussed uh, this is the code of simple linear regression which is uh, this one mod e linear model log of income and education is a independent variable so by clicking uh, by selecting this command first i am going to select this command and then click on the run button now uh, i am again clicking on the next command which is mod e to see the results which has been generated and stored in mod e by clicking on run button you can view that uh, our results are the coefficients the intercept and the uh, b value or uh, coefficient of x next uh, uh, command which dr salia has discussed is linear model using uh, we have done this next one is this one our result is you can compare both results uh, with the presentation the results are same so uh, come to the next this one in which uh, we can uh, use uh, uh, the same code in a different way in which data is uh, uh, used with the pipe sign so by choosing this command from here i am going to copy it copy and run in the r studio can you view uh, can you uh, see where is my uh, cursor is now it is in r studio here and control v now we are taking the wages data pipe sign and then linear model is going to be fitted on y is uh, in a response variable is log income and education is an independent variable and data is equal to dot dot shows that uh, the data is taken from the wages file which is defined before the pipe sign so we can use in both ways and the same command will produce the same results uh, which we have taken here 8.5577 uh, and 0.1418 so this is another code of the same uh, result now come to the this slide this one mod tidy data i am going to copy it from here and uh, placing in the r studio control v and just place our cursor anywhere in the row and run it you can view in the bottom uh, window the result is this one in which intercept and education and the values estimated values are this one these are the standard errors t statistic and the p values and the same results are here so tidy uh, is a function which gives you the test value of the test statistic now come to the next uh, function which is uh, glance in the powerpoint the next uh, this function is the glance 
I'm doing, going to copy this command from here. Copy and place here in the R Studio and place my cursor here and run. You can observe the results are obtained. R squared, R sigma, statistic, p-value, degree frame, log likelihood, all are the model diagnostics. And there are so many variables uh, in this uh, um, glance function, but there is less space, so results are not displayed uh, fully. So uh, whenever I'm, uh, exclude, uh, I'm increasing the size of the window and run this command again, we can have more variables here. So again, I'm running the same command. Now you can observe there are more variables as compared to the previous one. In the previous command, there are only log likelihood. But now my uh, size of the window is uh, more as compared to the previous one. You can see that AIC and BIC are now displayed. And again, there are two more variables left. If I increase the size of my window more, then we can uh, uh, have two more results here. So a glance will give you the model diagnostics. Now come to the next command, which is augment. This one, augment, I am again, uh, copy this command from presentation and place here in R Studio, R script file, control B and place my cursor anywhere in the same row and click on the run button. You can view the result of uh, augment is row name, log income, education. These are the, actually a first, uh, these two columns, this is the Y variable, this is your X variable, this is dependent variable, and this one is independent variable. Excluding these two, you have the results of augment the remaining one. Sigma, hat, residuals, fitted values, all these are the results of augment. So next is... Uh, uh, Dr. Sharka, I think you, uh, you need to proceed to the multiple regression. Yes, I, I did all the work you have done. Yes. I repeated all these. Thank you so to much. The, uh, Thank next topic. Yes. This is the multiple regression in which there are more than one variable, independent variable. First of all, we have taken single variable in linear model, which is education. Now, uh, as well as uh, um, one more variable is taken, as well as education, which is height. So two variables are taken as independent variable and the dependent variable is the same one, log of income. So whenever we are taking uh, more than one independent variable, this is called the multiple regression. And the code of this uh, uh, topic is this one. The code is same um, linear model. Dr. Sharka, Dr. Sharka, is it possible to show the slides uh, in a large size first? Because we, they are, okay. yeah, that's that's better. Thank you. Here, uh, okay. Here you can see that uh, this is the name of the model. E stands for education. A stands for height. Two variables are taken as an independent variable. So, linear model LM is the same one, but whenever we are taking two independent variables, that means it's a now multiple regression. Although the keyword LM stands for linear model and data is equal to dot shows that wages is uh, defined here before the pipe sign. And after running this command, I'm writing here mod E pipe sign tidy data. And a tidy gives you the uh, test statistic or testing procedure of all the um, values, estimated values. 
So these are the estimated values, standard errors, their statistics, and their p-values. So tidy uh, gives the results of these three columns. And uh, first uh, uh, two columns are actually the model, linear model of multiple regression. Now come to the next slide. Our goal is model log of income with respect to education, height, and sex. Now I am considering three variables in which uh, first two variable, education and height are the uh, quantitative variable and uh, sex is the categorical uh, qual uh, qualitative variable here. Yeah. And now uh, the command is This one, I'm now uh, representing the model by EHS. E for education, H for height, and S for sex. Code is the same one, just include one more variable, sex. And the same result, uh, same code is uh, writing here with the EHS model. And uh, uh, you can see the output having four uh, variables, uh, four uh, descriptives, do, four terms here in which four estimated values are produced along with the um, results of the T statistic because of tidy command. Next is where is sex male? You can see the result is for sex female and uh, uh, for the sex male and uh, the values uh, 0 0.462, which is highlighted, which is colored in blue, uh, representing the model here, mean log of income for female. Female is considered as a baseline here. So uh, for the baseline, we are writing zero. So uh, 7.79 is Education, so it's uh, uh, education. 0 0.00773 uh, height uh, is almost zero, so this is zero. And 4.62 uh, is for the male. So for the female, it is considered as zero. And uh, for the uh, male, you can see that uh, the result is uh, 0 plus 0 0.462, which is defined here uh, under the column estimate. Now come to the uh, next. Uh, this is the view of the wages data, uh, which you have shown. Uh, you can see in the R Studio the variables are income, height, weight. All these are the variables in the wages. None of the value in the income is zero because in wages, uh, income is greater than zero. We considered income greater than zero in the wages file. Therefore, it's a um, data frame of wage, wages. One more thing you can observe here, the type of the sex is character. You can see character type. So all male female data is entered as a character. Whenever we are uh, using data type character, it takes more place in the RAM. And uh, if we want to uh, make it factor, uh, it means we are going to assign numbers to these factors. For example, female zero and male one. Now I am assigning zero and one to these um, categories. Now this sex variable be converted into the factor variable. The data type of sex will be factor then. So Dr. you can- Dr. Uh, Dr. Sharka, can you please define for the people what is meant by the word factor? I'm going to define, okay. Or what is the difference between character and factor? Character is basically uh, a variable, data type of the variable in which only alphabet can be entered. It means small letters, 26 letters, and capital 26 alphabet. 
so 52 letters are allowed to into the, uh, enter into the sex but whenever we are assigning these um, variable values numbers for example strongly agree agree disagree 0 1 2 3 4 5 so these are the codes in the form of numbers assigned to the variable so now this uh, character type variable is converted into the factor this is the correct right. type. thank you so much thank you this is the factor in which now we are converting uh, the variable six into the factor by using the command factor which we have studied before in the previous uh, workshop and the levels are defined here uh, first level is for male second level is for female and third for uh, others and this is our data this is our data which is defined in terms of uh, in the vector c and uh, levels are for whole uh, data set we can enter so many values here within this um, uh, parenthesis but levels are only three which remains the same for the whole hundreds thousands data uh, cases of the uh, data frame there may be more cases in the data frame but levels will remain the same for the whole uh, file so whenever you repeat the success again the output is this one in which this is the data this is the data and these are the levels which have defined first this uh, this one is only the result of the levels which are included in the factor so if there are 10 values in the data set for example 10 values yeah, um, or 15 values then there may be 15 values here but in the levels there are only three they remain the same one you can make with factors you can now easily understand that we are converting uh, character type variable into the factor type variable now you can observe the pages is the same one after running a command here this is uh, Oh, this is uh, the command wages mutate mutate is a, a command which introduce a new variable in our case we are uh, converting the previous sex with the same variable sex but now uh, you can observe the type of the sex is factor fctr now it has converted into the factor in our case Case, there are only two levels male and female now our wages is updated with the factor now again uh, run the same command of the multiple regression here you can observe this one this is our command linear model this is a dependent variable three independent variables education height and sex data is the same one which is wages and pipe sign the tidy this gives you the result this one but now in our case sex female is considered as the um, factor variable factor actually uh, consumes less space in uh, the ram and uh, this uh, uh, code is run faster than the previous one but what does all of this look like we are uh, now visualize all these results by the graphs model visualization there are two types of visualization simple linear regression model and multiple linear regression model first of all we consider the first one which is simple case number one in which you can see ggplot ggplot we have done this it, it, it gives us the plot in our case we are considering the point that's why it gives us the scatter plot point shows that we are moving, going to make scatter plot this is our x variable and this is our y variable dependent variable 
is taken along the y axis independent variables is taken along the x axis so this is our scatter plot this is our scatter plot our goal is we wish to superimpose the regression on the scatter plot which we have uh, done before we want to apply one more line uh, on the same graph this is the code you have observed uh, this uh, is the um, this this is the code of the scatter plot you can see there is no any other geom function other than the point point gives you the scatter plot only so if you want to make line on this uh, graph then you have to add more geom functions in it more geom functions which is uh, now on the next slide this one geom smooth geom smooth is a function which is used to make a line on the same scatter plot so considering the previous command of the scatter as it is and then append a plus sign and geom smooth and the linear model which uh, is the name of the model for example mod e mod h mod e h so you have to define your uh, model here and then geom smooth function will give you the line on the same scatter plot these are the arguments in the parentheses but about the complex models and residues we will see more in the next uh, slides you can observe uh, that the uh, top left corner having the command in which up to this it will give you the scatter plot and the last geom function last geom function is giving geom smooth is giving the blue line and the method is linear model Uh, i think uh, we should run this command uh, first before proceeding you can observe uh, uh, this highlighted uh, model is uh, the multiple model this one this one model eh this model uh, having education and height as two independent variable first of all i run this command after running you can observe the output of this uh, command is in the bottom window bottom side uh, of the r studio and uh, having the estimate standard error statistics and their corresponding p values and uh, now i uh, just copy this command wages from the presentation method lm just copy it from here and uh, for example control p and just run this whole command in one go i can place my cursor anywhere in the row because pipe sign and plus sign shows this is a single command but but i am highlighting the whole command so that you can understand the whole command is going to run in the one go and geom smooth go oh, this is a uh, output you can observe the output is here on the bottom right corner we can zoom it from here and it, this is the big view the uh, scatter plot along with the blue line which is uh, obtained from the function geom smooth okay now come to the next uh, uh, presentation slide of the presentation model r 
right now up to this we have done all the functions including tidy augment and glance which are included in the broom package you can uh, observe there is uh, um, a function uh, a package model r which is representing here in the right bottom uh, bottom right corner model r in the previous all slides it was broom so from uh, this slide to onwards sorry uh, this is model r library model r is uh, a command which gives you uh, to upload this package into the ram so that it is ready to use all the functions containing in this uh, package is now ready to use now come to the next uh, add predictions this is a first function uh, including uh, in this package we, we, uh, which we are going to discuss add predictions add predictions means uh, you are uh, you can um, uh, mention the time frame for which you want to find the forecast or predictions so add prediction basically construct a column corresponding to each pair of values x and y x y z anything dependent and in independent variables are given into the column and corresponding one more column is appended in the uh, data frame whenever you are applying this command add predictions and the syntax is add predictions data is written here or you can mention your data here with the pipe sign model and variable the caption you can define uh, here about uh, uh, for the predictions by default the spelling of the caption prediction are p r e d but you can uh, change the caption uh, of the prediction uh, uh, according to your own choice now come to the next uh, slide uh, dr sharka can i ask a question here if you uh, uh, okay okay you see it says overlaps with augment because in augment okay. also we were we were getting that augment gives you a uh, multiple functions at the same time but at, sometimes we don't need other functions uh, only predictions are required so add prediction and augment uh, results are same but uh, augment have so many other columns other than the predictions but add prediction gives you the single column only so if we if we want to do it through augment then we will have to filter out that particular column if yes you have to use want to, if you want uh, right. then you have to apply two, two commands filter right. uh, okay right this is uh, the command you can see here wages pipe sign add prediction is the keyword and mod h is the model uh by uh, you can uh, uh, write wages here with the comma or you can write wages in the start and the uh, output is here predict you didn't mention here the caption of the variable uh, by default pred but if you want to change the variable uh, name or caption then you can write of your own choice here next is uh, add prediction next is add residue in the same way the add residue gives you the single column of residues along with the given columns of x and y dependent and independent variables and as again it's overlaps with augment because augment also gives you the residues as well as the fitted values but in a add uh, predicted uh, predicted and fitted both are the same so uh, augment having both columns residues and fitted add residues mm -hmm. add residues mod h now it's here residues by default r e s i d is the caption of the residues you can change it by defining here within this parenthesis another example add the predictions of mod ehs we have discussed in the previous two slides the simplest modded 
model but in this example they are giving you the multiple model in which education height and sex all three are considered as a uh, independent variable and the dependent variable is log of income and then visualize your results this is the code in which wages this is the wages add predictions gives you the one column of predictions this is the model which is defined within the parentheses next is the visualization so ggplot function is used x is the independent variable this is our dependent variables because uh, we want to find uh, fit the uh, fitted values should be here and uh, x should be on the along the x axis we want to make such of uh, graph here and uh, one more thing sex uh, color is equal to sex because in this model we have three variables but scatter plot or any plot are two dimensional two dimensions so uh, how can we show four variables one is the uh, dependent variables and other three are the independent variables in one graph so we use uh, facet function which gives us uh, opportunity to produce a graph in which uh, uh, sex is represented by the colors height and predicted are in two dimensional and facet wrap gives you the matrix of different graphs in one you uh, know definitely there are matrix of graphs in such a way and this is one single graph so one variable is, is handled uh, in this way you can now uh, see in the next uh, uh, slide the output of this code then uh, we will discuss it in more way this one this is uh, uh, the output of the command this is education level 1 education level 6 education level 11 or education level 20 so education is handled by the matrix function okay education is handled in this way sex is handled by the color male and female and in the uh, x axis height is on here and uh, fitted values are on along the y axis so face it using this command face it back you can uh, uh, um, use more than uh, one variable independent variables in a single graph wages add residuals gg plot geom histogram now uh, we uh, our aim is to uh, sh show that residuals are normally dis distributed or not to show this we construct a histogram here and uh, histogram are uh, based on the uh, residuals they are zero in the center if it is normally distributed then we can say uh, residuals are normally distributed so uh, it is another way of uh, viewing viewing the normality of the residuals for the model diagnostics spread residuals we have discussed two uh, commands here first one is uh, add uh, um, residuals and add predicted uh, dr sharka if you could wrap that uh, previous uh, normal curve which okay, we can okay. see here thank you and dr sharka um, we uh, we have to speed it up now because we have okay. a presentation coming thank you okay okay spread is one more function um, which is parallel to uh, the previous one add add gives you the single value single column and spread gives you the more columns here for example uh, you have uh, uh, fit com you ha you want to compare more models and you want to compare the residuals of more models in one go then you will construct uh, um, residuals for each model in one row uh, one column so say this is for model 1 this is for model 2 and all these are the residuals and this is for model 3 okay. so three residuals are compared in one um, uh, table 
so that uh, you can easily compare all of them. So spread function will be used then. This is the output of spread in which you can observe there are mod A, EH, mod EHS. This is simple linear model in which one independent variable, two are independent variables, and in this three independent variables. And their residuals are in the column form. All three columns are for the residuals of three different models by using the spread function. Gathered residuals. Gather residuals is another way of uh, viewing the residuals uh, for the multiple models, uh, but in this case, case one is considered and three residuals are given in a one column, in three rows in one column. This residual is for model one, next for model two, next for model three. Three residuals are given in the same column by using the gather command. So uh, whenever uh, your need is to construct, uh, to compare the residuals in the column form, then you have to use spread function. If you want to compare the residuals within single column, then gather is used. This one in, in which you can observe, this is the single case, 1960 female for the same education level. But the residuals are for the, in single column and for different models using the residual, the gather residual command. And using the gather residuals, you can compare the uh, their residuals using the histogram in one graph. I think uh, we should construct this uh, here in SPSS oh, in, in R Studio. I'm just copying this command here. And uh, copy in the R Studio and run this command here by clicking on run button. In the bottom uh, right corner, you can uh, see the three histograms are constructed for three different models. This is for model, model EH, this is for model EHS, and this is for model H. And these are the three histograms of based on the residues to check the normality of the residues. Now come to the uh, next uh, topic in our presentation, which is, uh, these are the just comparison of uh, two functions in which similar like to add prediction, spread prediction and gather prediction, you can have uh, the three functions in the residuals. This is uh, end of the modeling with broom and modeler. Now, uh, next for the new uh, comers, we have uh, to discuss one, uh, uh, just, uh, just one okay. moment, uh, Dr. Sharka. I have, a, uh, okay. I have a, a comment to make. I think uh, I maybe made a mistake saying that the LM LM linear model function was a part of the model R package because uh, I thought it was a no, part no, no. of the model. Basically, uh, LM is, you can make. No, 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 LM is basically function of R, basic R. In a, it is included in the stats uh, package. Uh, right. if, uh, if you didn't have a tidyverse, if you didn't use tidyverse, linear model is still in, uh, in the R studio. You okay, can use okay. it. Right. But these functions are not uh, add residues and uh, spread residues and gather. Right. These are the functions along with right. the linear model, which is a basic function. LM right. is the basic function. And along with this, you can have uh, more opportunity to get the results. Of, Thank you very uh, much uh, for that choice. correction. I appreciate that. And uh, there's a spelling mistake here, which we will correct, which we, you know, these slides are basically from 
the people who have created all this so sometimes you know human error is possible in every corner of the world that we can will correct you know this is obviously it should be predictions i don't think it can be predictions uh, so we will correct that now uh, oh. just for 2 3 4 minutes dr sharka for the sake of the new people who are for the first time attending this workshop i will teach you how to import your own data into our studio i'm just uh, doing this in the r studio this is our r studio in which uh, um, i'm just cleaning it uh, right top right corner there is a button of uh, import data set you can observe there import data set just click on this button import data set from excel and spss because uh, normally you have data um, uh, raw data in the excel form or spss form whenever you are ta taking uh, your data from any secondary source then it is already entered into the package uh, normally it is in excel or spss so using secondary data for your own um, use you can import that data into the r studio first and then use your own commands on the same data set so first of all you have to import the files from the excel just uh, uh, click on the excel this one a new window will be open here in which browse you will uh, browse your file into your uh, hard disk or any uh, storage device in our case it is in uh, uh, pi star i stored it in pi star first training there was a nimbus file yes it's a work excel worksheet from the extension a type of the data you can see some microsoft excel worksheet i'm clicking it and open it by uh, clicking on this you can see the preview of this one it's, it means uh, your file exist in the uh, um, computer now its code is here in the um, bottom side you can copy this code and uh, place uh, paste in the the r studio for the future for the next time or if you want to use for the single time you just click on the import button here it's up to you i am going to copy it and uh, import <clears throat> both ways dr sharka yes excuse me please can you please yes, repeat again this import data command if you don't mind okay import data okay 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 thank you okay okay again please. import and control c for copy it and import you can see in uh, your x uh, in this uh, r studio this is this is your uh, file and uh, this is a name of your file nimbus and now i am repeating the whole process again this is import data set button i am right. clicking on it okay okay i am clicking on this button whenever you click there is one more window having from excel from spss from sas data text file or base more uh, options are there but uh, here i am using the command excel right okay excel now you have to browse your file into the uh, hard disk of your own computer you you should know the path of your file uh, my file is in uh, pi star so i am this f then pi star first training and nimbus it's uh, uh, there are two types of uh, nimbus file here comma separated csv uh, file is also uh, with the same name but i clicked in the uh, on the button excel so i have to select uh, the bottom one excel worksheet and this one and then you can import you can choose the code from here for the uh, 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 to store in the file r studio file r script file for example i am just copy it from here control c just cancel it going to cancel it and writing it control b 
and first of all i have to close it so that nimbus is not uh, any more in the um, our studio there is no nimbus now now i am going to run this command here now you can see nimbus is now present okay, thank you here. very much dr sharka i think uh, this is very clear now and we need to now proceed to the next thing uh, thank you so much over to you, dr sarya thank you so much thanks okay. a lot thank you uh, okay uh, ladies and gentlemen i will now share my screen and we go to the next slide uh, you will recall that uh, i was mentioning to you that after the presentation regarding the today's topic model r we will be having a presentation by dr reza who is uh, from uh, you who is affiliated with the university of tabriz in iran and also with the university of windsor in canada so as you will recall the people who have been attending these workshops that i had requested our participants from different countries uh, to present their work so uh, mr thomas mavora he presented he is from kenya and he presented his work in workshop number 3 and dr najla mohammad parmala she is from saudi arabia she presented her work in workshop number 4 today dr raza Uh, who's from basically from Iran he is presenting his work but it is in the form of a video because he uh, shared with me this morning that for the past one or two days he is not well and he needed to go to the hospital or to the doctor so he is still in spite of not being well he has created a video and in that the entire presentation that he would have given live it is in that video so i now i would like to request uh, after stopping my screen stop shipping to share it i will request uh, dr wasim abbas the focal person to please share the video uh dr wasim we cannot hear the gentleman uh dr wasim is there a problem Hello Dr. Vaseem is is there a problem in sharing the video Hindi Hello Yeah uh we are not able to see the video Are you listening now Uh but uh, it has to move also it's not moving yet Okay now I think it is started Uh, Dr. Vasim, I think it has to be started from the beginning. Okay. Okay, I am starting from the beginning. Hello, everybody. I wish you all all to see and uh, uh, very well. So, first of all, I would like to uh, to thank uh, Pakistan Islamic Society of Statistics. Dr. Salim Abbas for such uh, for arranging such a great series of workshop on tidy wars and the both in 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 practical also for and the 
Dr. Vaseem, I would like to request you to stop the video for a minute. I think uh, the voice is not coming out very properly. Dr. Vaseem, can you hear me? If you could please stop it from your side, I could try it from my side. Maybe it uh, works better. Uh, I'm yeah, going to try have, to do it. I have stop. Uh, you, may, you may run the video at uh, your own end. I'm going to try that now. OK. Because when I was hearing it uh, directly, I could hear it very well. Now let me see how it can work. Um, I'm sharing my screen and I'm going to click on this first part. So first of all, I would like to uh, to thank uh, Pakistan Islamic Society of Statistics and also Dr. Saleh for such for arranging such a great series of workshop on Taji Force and really I found them very helpful uh, both in, in in practical situation also for managing big data. As you know, like nowadays, this is the time of data and anything helpful for that will be very uh, good and interesting. So today I'm going to show like a few examples of how Thai divorce can help uh, in, in uh, managing the game or specifically for baseball in the United States and really they really, uh, uh, in fact, I mean they are a real user of Thai divorce for in the daily basis. So. Uh, this data, first of all, we need to have this package itself, so library uh, of data and odds converter, so I'm back in TV because we need the player, tidy divorce, and GG plan. So, uh, the data is MLB 2016, so if you look at the data and the description of the data are given here, so major league uh, MLB 2016 stands for major league baseball for 2016 season. So this is the name of the data and format is, is the title with 20 variables including game ID, uh, uh, even time, even date time, and uh, even date time for like for UTS, for ET, and also who was the away team, who was the home team, and double header game. Uh, this is the most uh, one of the important variable indicate if there was a double header in the team. And in fact, you know, like we need some knowledge from baseball to see uh, the winning conditions of uh, a game in each game. So, and then we need to see uh, starting pitcher home away, a final score for home team, final score for away team. And etc. So we have uh, some of the variables, and in fact, uh, that's kind of very uh, so uh, complicated data. So first of all, I actually I cleaned the data uh, somehow. So this part was, in fact, for me was the, the one of the hardest parts to see. Is and I don't want to worry about it on the data cleaning uh, for the tight divorce. Maybe. Later on, we, we talk about that, and uh, like, or, uh, there are some variables here, and we need to manipulate them based on some knowledge in MLB, which I don't want to take time for those because uh, you know it's kind of time-consuming for this workshop. Now, uh, so uh, so yeah, uh, I cleaned the data for MLB 2016, and now. We can see how the data looks like here. 
So and uh, so after cleaning, we see that we have a title of uh, more than 20, uh, 400 and uh, you know we have uh, like 11 variables that we we need to this study. So and. Where actually I did this study is that that was a project given one of the uh, company called Presento Company uh, to, for, to study on, on, on the data that they have presented for baseball, uh, MLB 2016, and they, they want to predict some of the outcomes for this <coughs> event. So, uh, first of all, uh, the, so there was a couple of questions regarding to this uh, data. So, and I'm going to read what the question were. So the first question was, <coughs> so the first, <coughs> sorry, I am kind of uh, get, uh, have got cold. So, so the qu first question was, which team or teams played the most double header? So, and the, the in fact, uh, the hit is the double. Heater consists of playing two games in one single day. So playing of two games in one single day. So this is the question for us. So which teams played the most double heater? Uh, the most double heaters. Now we look at the data. So if we look at the data, so the data looks like the double heater uh, game. So we have zero, 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 etc. And there could be many zero. That's why, in fact, we first uh, we want to get rid of of those zero. So we filter our data to get those only those who have a positive double header. And then, so we want to see which teams, right, or which team. So it could be a v, a home team or away team. So no matter which team is, but we first uh, group them by home team. So once we group by home team, we can obtain, in fact, what they are. So let me do this here. So then the data, how, see how the data looks like. Yeah. So the data looks like, uh, sorry, like uh, oh, there is a, a kind of uh, error here. And why this coming is, uh, so because of, oh, let me run the whole the whole things and then you will see what's, what what the, what it looks like and then uh, sorry yeah I'm going to, to run the whole things here and then uh, it will show you how so look that the answer is the answer should be looked like this so the answer should be uh, these teams that they had the, the most double heaters. So now, how we how we uh, obtain the answer? So we first we filter this. We first select those who had positive double heater. Then we group by home team because which says which team, and then we create a new variable by counting uh, the number of uh, by counting uh, the number of double heaters, and then we ungroup them. Again, we select we filter to see which one had the most. Uh, double heaters, and then we select the, the home team and the, the end teams as the maximum of the end teams. And then, uh, since there might be some of the, you know, some of uh, repetition in the data, we use this function distinct uh, to to select, uh, we, you know, only the unique observations, and then we make that one as a data frame, and then finally we get the, the results. So here we use the three or four important functions. First one was filter, group by, mutate, and then uh, you know distinct. So these three functions are, are most the most important function uh, to make the, this data. So so the most hidden double header, the, the, the most double header uh, games was uh, Baltimore uh, with four and Chicago. Cause it for, uh, and Minnesota to be speaking for. So this is the answer for this question. Now, the second question was, in fact, uh, uh, the second question was, uh, let's look at the second question. So, the second question was, 
What was the final win percentage of Chicago Cubs at the end of 2016? So this is very important because it will show us some of the better condition for the new game. So in order to do to, to solve this question, uh, actually we need to, to see what's the uh, what's the mean condition for each game. So the mean condition is so if the team is home uh, home team, then uh, the score the fi the final score must be for home team must be bigger than the final score for the away team. So consider two teams are playing. One of the team will be the home team, and other team will be the away team. If the final score for the home team is bigger than the final score for the away team, there will be the chance of there will be a chance of uh, I mean that then uh, the, the team will win. So now here, uh, the question asked about the final percentage of Chicago Cubs. So first, that's why we first need to filter the data. So we first will filter the data, select only Chicago Cubs to be as a home team or Chicago Cubs as a away team. Then we create a new variable by mutate function. We create a new variable called win. So we see uh, this, the presentation is in two parts. So I'm opening the second one now. So as I mentioned, we create a new variable so for this one. And then we look to see that if the new variable uh, like we, new variable consisting of this uh, the win, so uh, to see the, the win if the, so it will be a zero one, and how it looks like it looks like if the home team is Chicago Cubs, and if the final score for the home team is bigger than the final score for the away team, then then we put one. Otherwise, if the, the, the final team. If the final, uh, if the away team was Chicago Cubs and final score for the away team was bigger than final score for the home team, then we put one again. So now we select the home team, away team, final score for home team, final score for away team, and also the win, so win variable. And then we only need, in fact, here we only need the win, right? So it is only this variable. And then we pull out this, uh, we use the function for V. So, uh, so we use this function to select only the win variable, right? So only the data for win variable. And then we scale the percentage of the, uh, we scale in fact the percentage of, uh, um, of this variable. So, and it shows us, uh, in fact, it shows us uh, Let's uh, run this data at 64 percent. So the final score, so the the the, the meaning percent, the final winning percentage for the Chicago car will be four percent. Now, then, then the nicer question will be uh, like this question. So the question is the second question. The the, the other question is. Plot the winning percentage of Chicago Cubs as a function of time in 2016. So that will be a really good question. So let's first look at the answer. How the answer looks like? See, this is the answer. So starting from April, ending to, to December. So we want to see this plot, right? So as the time passed, we want to see how was the winning percentage of Chicago Cubs. Uh, changing over the time to become like a 64%. Now I'm looking back to the data. So now, again, uh, since it asked the, the, the chance or the changing probability or the changing the chance of Chicago Cubs, so we only care about Chicago Cubs team. So again, in MLB data, we filter for home team to be Chicago Cubs or away team to be Chicago Cubs. Right. So now, again, we, we mutate a new variable called mean. 
So the win will be, again, like the, the previous uh, example, if the home team uh, is Chicago Cubs and final score home was bigger than final score away, we put zero and we put one like as a success. And otherwise, we look at if the, 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 the away team was Chicago Cubs and final score for away team bigger than final score for home team. We, we create, we put one, it's, uh, otherwise we put zero. Now we select from this database, uh, with data, we select the uh, event time, home team, away team, and the win, right? The win will be zero or one. So then we arrange, we sort them based on the event time. Now, what we are going to do, we are going to, uh, in fact, uh, to create a new variable. So our end call one to the number of games. So, and then the win percentage will be cumulative sum of win divided by our end number of games, right? Because if the time changing, so the number of games will change, and then we want to see how it looks. Like. So now we don't want the, this, this value, we don't want the RN. So that's why we select the, everything but this one. Now, the question is, uh, uh, in fact, uh, we, we use ggplot, so we use ggplot, so q add to df will be our data, and then our x will be even time, and i over y, and on the y axis we will put mean percentage, and then by this we can all easily obtain the meaning percentage, so the change in the, the probability of uh, Chicago Cubs, and it looks like in fact, this nice figure, and as we see, uh, as we see, uh, after almost uh, this month, after this times, so it's it's become almost quite, uh, you know, uh, steady for about uh, sixty-four percent. So, and there are also a couple of other things, uh, other questions related to this data. And I don't want to uh, actually to, to put time on them because they really want uh, you know high knowledge of uh, baseball games. So I, I just want to skip those. And however, I am going to to send the, the data for Dr. Saleha, and uh, you will see what the, the what the, the question looked like. So I don't want to waste the, the team time. I mean the presentation. Uh, I mean there's the workshop time for those, uh, you know, not uh, expert question for for us. So thank you everybody. And I hope you enjoy uh, the rest of the, the workshop. Uh, well, uh, although he's not here, but uh, on behalf of uh, my, me, myself, my team, I saw Spy Star and all the participants. Uh, Dr. Reza, I would like to thank you. I'm sure you will listen to this uh, pres uh, recording. And uh, I want to thank you for all the effort you've made. And uh, I'm so glad that you have uh, shown the utilization of all these functions of uh, Tidyverse that we have been trying to uh, teach during these uh, five workshops. And also, we, you presented some functions that we did not talk about, uh, but most of them were the ones that we had talked about. So uh, thank you very much for that. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I will now uh, go to the next thing and I will share my screen and also go to the next slide. What comes next is this uh, discussion that we would like to have regarding the future activities of PyStar. So now it is time for you to interact with me and uh, all of us can interact with each other, uh, but we will do it in a, uh, you know, in a guided way. So the first one is the World Statistics Day, the one which is coming up quickly. So if I may uh, escape the, this thing and uh, go to the, uh, maybe I can stop the share for a while and look at uh, the participants straight. Now I can see everybody. So uh, Mr. Haseeb, Dr. Zahed, Dr. Najla, Hafiza Nida, Salia Daud, 
Dr. Ali Ahmed has joined. That's great. Um, I'll, uh, I'll be uh, talking to you further, Dr. Ali, in a short while, asking you to address the participants and also Dr. Zahoor also, because Dr. Hanif Mia is not here, but both Dr. Zahoor and Dr. Ali are, are here. Dr. Zahoor, I now don't see, although I was seeing him for just a short while ago. Safura Samuel is here, Aksa Abid is here, Kamal Aslam is my own team member, Dr. Razia Noreen, uh, Ms. Baliga, uh, then of course Dr. Sharka is here and Iftikhar Sahib is also here, Vaseem is here, Dr. Vaseem Abbas. So who would like to begin and by uh, presenting some idea how we can uh, celebrate the upcoming World Statistics Day? I can get, throw an idea uh, because it is the time of uh, COVID, uh, we can still do it online. And the biggest advantage is that we have people from different countries also uh, in it as much as anybody from within our country. So uh, that is one idea that we some, do something online. So what ideas coming from your side? Uh, Ms. Baliga, would you like to say something? Uh, Perhaps but, uh, applications of statistics, ma'am. How to apply statistics in life? Uh, actually, so the World was, Statistics uh, the World Statistics Day was uh, announced by the I think it was the International Statistical Institute that said mm -hmm. that we should uh, celebrate this thing uh, or this day all over the world. Uh, the first one I think was in 2010. Then the next one was in 2015, and now this year, 2020. But actually, different countries have not only been doing it with a gap of five years. In our uh, mentor, our teacher, Professor Dr. Munir Ahmed Marhum, he uh, was uh, organizing this World Statistics Day almost every year. Also, at my institution, at Canet College, we have been organizing it. So, uh, and other people, of course, so many countries are doing it. And this time it is that year, which is according to the ISI timetable also, 2010, then 2015, and now 2020. So it would be, uh, I mean, I need ideas, uh, particularly from the statistics people, as to how you would uh, want us to organize this, this time. Any idea comes to your mind, uh, Dr. Zayed Hussain, would you like to say something? Well, I think people are not uh, yet uh, not clear about it. So please think about it. And uh, we will be, uh, we already have the uh, group uh, for this workshop, WhatsApp group. And the new people will be added to the group. So please do put your ideas over here. Dr. Alia, uh, welcome to the uh, to the workshop. And if you would please uh, give some input, that would be very kind. For the yeah, new sorry. people, Dr. Alia is the chairperson of the ISOS Executive Committee, and she is the daughter of Professor Dr. Munir Ahmed. Yeah, that's my introduction. Yeah, my anyways, I always miss him. You know, when when you when uh, you guys are all around, best family, everyone. Hope yes. You have had a good workshop, and I am really I miss Dr. David's uh, keynote speech. I was so much looking forward to it. I just got stuck in some official meeting and all. So uh, I hope it was it was Dr. very. Ajay, you, uh, we will send to you the recording, and you can listen to it. You okay, okay, sure. I, will, I wanted to thank him as well. You know, you were having yes. this interest in uh, ISOS, you know, and. It's really great of him to, you know, uh, give us uh, the opportunity to listen to him. And he must have you know, achieved a lot from whatever he has said. Exactly. Uh, exactly. Yeah, yeah. And I like the idea of your, uh, you know, trying to celebrate yet celebrating the statistical day. Uh, I was looking at the ISI website. I think they propose it every year. Do they? I don't know. Uh, sorry, uh, what is the World question? Statistics, World Statistics Day. Uh, do, yeah. uh, does the ISI propose it every year? 
No, uh, not every uh, year. They, they, as I said, they do it five every five years. But you see, we countries are not uh, barred from doing it every year. Uh, so as I, I said, know, I was I was looking yeah. at the theme, uh, connecting connecting the world with data. We can trust. So you know, my idea was uh, would be to create an uh, um, some sort of indicators for you know having a trustworthy or authoritative data, like they have said, yeah, innovation and the public good in national. That is true. Uh, that is uh, the theme for this time. That is absolutely yeah. correct. Yeah, so but for celebrating this day, Dr. Alia, then we can have uh, some of our speakers mm -hmm. speaking on exactly this particular theme. Uh, that is how we could celebrate it. In, yeah, you know, and we can get in sync with, you know, with them globally. So I think this would be a good idea to follow their theme. That yes, would make yes. our jobs easy as well. You so can certainly. You know, talk towards it, huh? And another idea has come to my mind uh, that uh, just as you said it, it has occurred in my mind just now, that mm. uh, just like Dr. David Stern has spoken and uh, inshallah, uh, some people from the American Statistical Association also one of them has already, uh, the, uh, she's a very senior person and she mm. has agreed that she will be speaking to us in one of okay. these workshops. So maybe okay. for this World Statistics Day also, I could try to get in touch with some of the ISI people who I know. Mm. So that as you, as you say that uh, we could sync with them and if mm. uh, we could have one speech by them and uh, one by somebody from uh, Pakistan and uh, maybe Najla who's here. Uh, if you want to give some input, uh, Dr. Najla, would you please tell me, would you or any of your colleague in Saudi Arabia, would you be in a position to uh, contribute to this World Statistics Day? Uh, hello, actually I don't have idea, but um, I can tell him about this uh, this event. Uh, you, uh, yeah, we can, I think all of us can think further on this. And then if you, some more ideas are generated, please do share them with, with us in the WhatsApp group, or you can send a private message or email. Yeah. Uh, thank you for that. And now the next one is the training workshops on machine learning. So, um, as some of you know that in the PyStar, Pi I saw PyStar group, I put this query to people a few weeks ago that after we complete, you know, Tidyverse is not complete. There's so much, there's so much more, but I, we feel that five workshops are sufficient at the moment. Maybe we can start again on this one next year again. But after these five on Tidyverse, I think we are in for a change. So then when I put this question in the group, a number of people said that they would want to learn machine learning. Now today, Dr. David Stern was uh, saying that it's, you know, he was saying that we don't need to necessarily get to the nitty gritty uh, to, to the ABC of machine learning or something like that. But I think, I think you will agree that uh, we do need to at least first get some idea of what machine learning is about. Do you think it's a good idea to uh, have a series of workshops now in the coming months, maybe three, four workshops on machine learning? Please I do give me I your think, I think it would be lovely because uh, being uh, in NCBA, I have, be, I have encountered a couple of students, no, no, rather many students who want to brilliant idea. Right. And Safura, yeah. you want to say something? Safura, please unmute your mic and let me know. Safura Samuel is also here. She's also my, my student and now she's working in FC College University. Yes, Safura? Uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, I just want to say uh, that the machine learning uh, session uh, will be good and beneficial for all of us. So I, I, I really want uh, to attend this session. I said it's very, yeah. very good, but you know, uh, that is a slightly next level. First of all, we do, all of us need to get to know the ABC of the thing. Yes, ma'am. 
and then later we can go to those high levels so does anybody have any particular person in mind who could act as the resource person for this particular topic i can find out we have got a very good cs department at ncbi and i think they have actually dr alia uh, dr alia the thing is that we are wanting this person to be basically a statistics uh, uh, person with knowledge of machine learning okay. we'll because you see otherwise we say uh, we uh, one sentence is also being uh, said that you know uh, data science and big data this is basically the domain of statistics people uh, definitely uh, yes. and and as if it has been hijacked by the computer science people exactly um, yes. we feel that the computer science people are wonderful and experts mm -hmm. big experts mm -hmm. but but the statistical insight uh, would be more in those you know, who have been you know basically you know i i i don't i didn't meet any statistician who would talk about machine learning you know it's the cs people that i hear them saying all the time about machine learning and you know digital that and digital you know whatever it is and big data i mean i so i would love to hear the statisticians talk about uh, machine learning and uh, i would like to say that there are only a few in pakistan i think as yet mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. right here in our workshop we have had a lady who is who who's basically stats person okay. but she has uh, got these certifications in machine learning mm -hmm. uh, but uh, uh, due to some uh, constraints from, from the organization uh she is unable to do it i think they uh, have some kind of constraints that they are not allowed to uh give workshops elsewhere or something like that i don't know uh, but uh, but there are only a few people so uh, i think uh, dr raza whose presentation we all just now heard he has also uh, volunteered to he has he is basically a stats person and he okay. did send uh, some message a number of weeks ago uh, that he can also act as a trainer for me try this as well spent with me on this topic then we have statistical consultancy uh, sessions discussion and i said to you in the beginning that i'll give you a good news some of you who were here last time they will recall that ms baliga was right here she said that she is also she is one who wants to uh, do this and she wants to do this with pi star because her basic area is not statistics she is doing a phd in uh, education so uh, I, the good news is that uh, she did send to me her synopsis in uh, confidence and in good faith and with complete trust and uh, having looked at that i think that we are in a position to uh, connect her with a person who could act as a consultant so pi star being the forum uh, we connect the cl client let me say <laughs> with the consultant so that will be the beginning of this dimension of pi star Uh, also, you, uh, the next topic. Uh, thank you. The next topic is the research projects. So here, I want your input, uh, people. Please, आप सब लोग भी बोले ना. What about research projects? Uh, I also see Mr. Iftikhar. Thank you very much for being here, Iftikhar Sai. Uh, of course, uh, those who don't know, he is the executive secretary uh, secretary of ISOS. so dr zahid could you please uh, let me know would you like to have some research projects being initiated by pi star and if we do what would be the mechanism why would anybody be interested etc etc please give some input hafiza nida maybe you can say something here you are doing phd right now so what about this initiative uh dr zahoor is not here if the khair sahab is uh, did he say that he would be here at the end i sent a message to he has he, has, he gone to a meeting he has gone to a meeting 
oh i see so it's not available now okay if there is no input uh, right away then uh, maybe we can just uh, stop this discussion here and after that what is next next is the i had written that uh, i would be requesting dr hanif mia but uh, unfortunately he is also not available uh, the president of isos so dr alia would you like to say something now on behalf of uh, isos and paista as the closing remarks for t for today yeah i would like to say thank you very much saleha for you know conducting so such successful workshops and i would like to thank all the participants you know global and national all of them thank you very much for showing the interest and this is how we can you know boost statistics in pakistan using these workshops and i think five star is a very uh, good platform and it has taken a good start now under uh, saleha and her team dr wasim and everybody else so i wish you all the best in your future endeavors and uh, maybe we can uh, expand more and we can have more workshops and i would again like to request you i think i requested last time as well why don't you try to arrange workshops for management people as well you know keeping in uh, view the um, uh, the need of statistics with management people so sure, if you no, can sure uh, sure we'll do that we can uh, why not make them Dr. easier Aliyah, maybe them you can have a maybe you could um, uh, you you could uh, we you and i could uh, discuss that in some detail uh -huh. and then we can go for it uh -huh. sure i mean non statistics uh, people are teaching data analysis honestly speaking and statistical you know you know i've i've seen so many advertisements regarding uh, learn data analysis and all of them are management people themselves and i know they have no idea what statistics is what goes on behind those softwares i mean a person like me for example and there are many like me who want to understand the mechanism behind it all you know so i would love to you know this is what i used to learn from dr saab and i miss him so much at times i literally used to ask him questions regarding statistics aur wo kehte the ke ye to statistician bhi aise sawal nahi poochte hain ya wo bhi nahi sochte ye wali baat ki piche kya hai bas samne samne karte hain to that's a good thing kehte hain aur ye jitne tum sawal pooch rahi ho they are bahut aasan hain lekin bahut mushkil hai jawab dena you know so that i really miss ya yeah, i want statisticians kam se kam mere ird gird sare jo hon wo unke sath mera itna ho jaye ke whenever i am in a problem ke koi statistical issue ho so i can you know come up with uh, a solution by working with them so i would love ke statisticians hame sikhaye ye cheeze sari bajaye iske ke management ke log seekh kar to sikhate hain aage i think the first thing we'll do is to get from you that uh, content uh, that you are uh, mentioning is being taught sure, by the i will, I will. I will. So yeah that, okay. that will be the starting point definitely uh. yeah we can do that thank you very much for that and dr ali i want you to know that uh, along with uh, dr wasim and iftikhar saheb uh, you know my team members dr sharka hashmi and ms zulekha mashkoor and tawal you know they yeah. are also doing such great work and without uh, dr sure. sharka's sure. and zulekha's support uh, in uh, in in delivering this content you know i could not have done it so i want to thank uh, you one ka and thank you zulekha aur iftikhar ko to i mean we can't do anything without iftikhar so he is right. inevitable exactly so usko i am not going to thank iftikhar because uh, he is part and parcel of anything that goes on in isos so therefore he doesn't deserve anything <laughs> no <laughs> oh, that is very unfair sorry thank you sorry thank you iftikhari ke liye i mean uh, he is wala zindagi de i mean may he live long inshallah taala and amin because you know he manages so much he manages so exactly. much exactly i saw there is nothing without him abu exactly. and him were the team you know i mean they were the team they were i saws in fact exactly. so i mean without him i can't imagine i saws right now uh, it's so good okay. to have you here dr alia because we are all students of professor dr munir ahmed maroom yeah. and you are yeah. his daughter and uh, you know that gives uh, adds to that uh, feeling yeah. because you are here uh, you know we, uh, we are also 
uh, also keep remembering him all the time. Yeah. Uh, I want to now talk about that announcement I wanted to make. Uh, in fact, it's already made, but I want to say it categorically that any uh, workshop that we do, since it is recorded, we would like to uh, share it with uh, people and uh, those who have not attended, they can get the recording, but we do have to have a mechanism for it. Uh, we will be uh, we will be charging for this thing like the registration fee that you paid for being in the workshop. If somebody mm -hmm. wants to purchase, they would pay the same amount. I think that's fair enough because the content is all there. So that's the yeah, announcement. Why not? For that. Yeah, why not? And plus, Saleha, please start working on the website. I mean, we need uh, a five-star yes, website. Yeah. I will direct your uh, your your advice to Dr. Vaseem, and I'll mm. repeat this sentence: Dr. Vaseem, please start <laughs> working on the website. Yeah, because uh, we have got a guy who will help you out. Yes, inshallah. Uh, yeah. Exactly. Uh, yes, we will. Uh, please do it. It's not something very you know. It, it's very easy. It's not that difficult. I mean, just yeah, start okay. it, and then yeah, we yes, can fill it up. Actually, we it's a, we still have, don't have a very large team. It's a small team, and everybody is very very busy with other things too. So I would like to take this opportunity to uh, you know to invite people to become a part of the five star team, so that we can take it further. Hey, why not? Uh, and please, uh, Vasim, you can you know send all the material to us, to me or to if the car, and we'll start doing it. We'll start you know come on, come on. at least we can initiate the work. Yes, inshallah, we will start. So more, uh, is, uh, uh, ladies and gentlemen, it is 5 p.m. now. So I do not want to keep anybody um, further. I want to thank every single one of you for being here. Thank, thank you, you so much. much. And, and thank you. Allah Hafiz. Allah Hafiz. Uh, Allah Hafiz. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Salia. Thank you so much. So people are free to. Thank you. The people are free to leave and if anybody wants to stay, I can be here.